Hi, VC. It's Danny. Um, it's been a while. Sorry for the long absence. I've just been working multiple jobs, working nonstop. Um, so, uh, not to complain. It's good to be busy, but uh, it's been it's been a lot. So I I was working on Record Store Day. I missed Record Store Day, but I did get to go out the day after. My my local shop, um, Atomic Records, in Burbank. Um, they don't do exclusives for Record Store Day. They just uh, kind of stock the bins with with good stuff they've been holding on. They've they've got such a huge um, a huge stock of 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 records at all times that you know if they wanted to go digging through their boxes and find good stuff, they always could. They always make an effort on Record Store Day. So I I didn't get to go until Sunday and kind of pick over the leavings. Um, but I found I I got a little stack, so I wanted to. I wanted to show you guys. Uh, first up is uh, the best of Percy Sledge on Atlantic. This is a cheap pickup um, and, and an easy one. I love, um, obviously, Atlantic Soul of this era is just is just uh, classic. Obviously, Percy Sledge when a man, <clears throat> excuse me, when a man loves a woman, um, and I found the uh, the best of comps, the Atlantic best of comps of this this period to be. Uh, a great buys. Um, so yeah, Percy Sledge has got a great uh, out of left field is incredible on here. Um, great cover of Dark End of the Street. Uh, yeah, very very happy with this pickup. It was super cheap too, which was nice. Uh, next up, this one was actually a bit of a blind to buy ish. Um, George Benson, The Other Side of Abbey Road. And so this is uh, George Benson doing Beatles covers. Uh, and I knew that I recognized the name George Benson, but I didn't really know. You hear how a few times that's been opened? I don't know if you heard that, but it creaks when you open it. Um, yeah, I didn't know exactly who George Benson was. I couldn't remember why I knew his name. Um, but this was giving me uh, Booker T and the MGs, um, Malcolm Moore Avenue. Uh, vibes. So I picked it up. I only got to listen to it once. Um, I, th I, it was definite. I mean, it's jazz. It was, it was jazzier than, and more orchestrated than I was expecting. But it's, it's really beautiful. I, I, I wasn't in the right headspace when I first listened to it. But I'm excited to, um, to try it again. See, see what I get out of it. Again, that one didn't break the bank. So happy to pick that up. Uh, this one, uh, thanks to. Uh, Brian over at Shamrock and Records, um, I saw that he had recently picked this one up. So uh, when I flipped past the cover, I knew what I was looking at. I, and if I had taken any time, I would have I would have recognized it was John Martin. Um, thanks to Andrew who turned me on to John Martin, gave me a, a copy of Solid Air when we met up. So this is a a, uh, a compilation on Island. Uh, not not too long after Solid Air, maybe an album past Solid Air. Uh, so far, so good. It's, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I don't want to call it a greatest hits, but it's, um, it's a compilation summarizing his, uh, his career up until this point. And unfortunately I hadn't, I haven't been able to spend any time with it, but, um, I've heard everybody in the VC speak so highly of John Martin so, for so long. And I love solid air since Andrew shared it with me. Uh, so I'm really excited to dig into this one. Um, here's another one. This was a blind buy for sure. Um, these little promo stickers really, uh, they get me going. Uh, so this is the Tain horse lips. And the Tain, that was the other thing that, that clued me off. The Tain is the name of um an ancient epic poem from ulster in ireland uh and the decemberists have actually already done which is how i know this it's not like i am up on my epic poetry um but the decemberists did uh kind of an, an epic prog ep called the tain so like a 20 minute song with five movements um and this is an irish prog band um they have some flute they have some uh some fiddle um it's it's kind of Jethro Tull-y, but I actually think I like it more. Uh, 
I don't have a lot of prog, but this is nice to have as a, uh, it's a very representative sound of prog, if you know what I mean. Um, sometimes for genres that I don't collect a lot of, I like to have at least one thing that really, really sounds like a prime example of the genre. This is it for me for prog, at least for now. Um, Yeah, uh, I, I, could, I could go a little more into detail. Maybe if I spend some more time with it, I'll bring it back out. And if anybody knows anything or knows this record, um, you know, I've only I've only kind of given it a cursory spin to see what it was all about. So comment below if you care about that record. Uh, another pick this up. The Irish Rovers, Emigrate, Emigrate. And I feel like... I saw somebody highlight this recently, and I can't remember if it was Headley or if it was part of part of my brain wants it to believe it was in one of Zeke's videos. I I don't know. I have no idea where where I saw this, but I feel like I've seen this on the VC. Um, Irish Rovers band name I've been hearing a lot, you know, since my whole life basically, but I never really listened to them. It's on Tara Records. Um, and they used to put out some of, uh, Christy Moore stuff over here in America. So I, I figured that was a safe bet. It's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, it's, it's clearly kind of, uh, focused on the connection between Ireland and America, which is always a big part of Irish music, but very excited to dig into this. Um, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm hoping there's going to be good stuff in there. I'll be disappointed if there's not. Speaking of good stuff, um, Joanne Kelly with John Fahey on Blue Goose. Uh, this is a, a minty, minty copy that they had for sale at a very good price. So I haven't decided yet. I have to check the address on the labels and make sure it's all kosher but i might i might do a bit of frankensteining with my my other copy which has a beautiful inner sleeve and original gold labels but um the cover has some water damage this is the the blue and orange labels beautiful pressing though i mean everything everything's in great condition it's a it's a plain inner sleeve here that the record store must have put in but this is a fantastic fantastic blues album joe and kelly is a british blues singer um john fahey of course plays on this uh, her cover of, of Hard Time Killing Four Blues is incredible. Pygmy Blues that, that opens the, the first side is, is amazing. Um, this is a great album. If you ever see this, this big, bold yellow color jumping out at you, do not hesitate. Um, yeah, super thrilled to get this. This is, you know, the list of records that I, I have to buy, even though I already own them, is not super long i know andrew's with me on this that he has he does this too but sometimes you just have to get it anyway um this is another one i was i was excited to pick up here this is uh frank stokes with um with dan sane and will Batts, and these are this is a series of recordings from the late 20s 27 29 and it's on roots uh and, and you can see and this is not uncommon in blues records. Um, you know, this is about one step away from being a private press. Um, and you'll find a lot of a lot of interesting old blues um, on these types of labels, I guess, because the, the, the recordings must be public domain in some way. I'm not sure. Um, but you'll find a lot of European labels that release old uh, pre-war blues. And, you know, the sound quality isn't always incredible, especially when you're kind of used to uh, Nick Pearl's mastering on the Yazoo comps as I am. Um, but Frank Stokes is too good. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. I love Frank Stokes. Just a fantastic bluesman from, um, from that time period and one who was relatively famous and, and recorded a lot of sides. Um, but I was, I was very happy when I, uh, when I, um, when I spun this, that although it's it's noisy, it's also very present, if that makes sense. Like, the noise is there, but so is the music sitting right next to it. A lot of times you can get these, and they'll be very noisy, and the music is buried beneath that. Um, but yeah, 
Frank Stokes on Roots, which if anybody knows anything about that label, let me know. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to pick up more from them. Um, yeah. And so I'm really trying to speed through these. I have to get to work. Always. Um, here's another cool one. This was, uh, I don't know. I don't always buy bootlegs. Uh, you can't buy bootlegs anymore on Discogs, which is, a, I, I get it. That's a good, probably a good move. Um, but this is All Roads Lead, or Paris, All Roads Lead to Dylan. Uh, ironically titled, because uh, this concert is not in Paris, but this is a Dylan bootleg from 78, I want to say. Uh, from right before uh, Slow Train Coming and the Gospel um, period kicked off, but he was he was playing with his gospel backup singers on this record. Uh, it's pretty good sound quality for a boot, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's just I mean, <clears throat> if you've heard the um, the Dylan Bootleg series, the the latest one that they just came out with it covered his gospel period. It, it's it was an incredible period in Dylan's career and especially the live shows he was just giving it his all um really believing in the music uh, i mean tambourine man mr tambourine man is one of those dylan songs that you've heard so many times that it's hard for it to feel interesting or alive or new uh the version of mr tambourine man that's on here is incredible um i actually haven't even gotten to side b <laughs> Uh, but Tangled Up in Blue, Like a Rolling Stone, I Shall Be Released. Uh, I can't wait to hear to hear those versions on here. Um, I don't always pick up boots, but, uh, you know, I'm glad I picked up this one anyway. Uh, and it wasn't expensive either. It was, you know, it was $9. So, happy to have this one. All right. I didn't do gruff this time, Grails up front, so we're hopefully getting getting better as we go along here. Um, it is finished by Nina Simone, uh, 1974. Yes. Uh, this is... It's getting into, you know, later period, Nina Simone. And there's... You know her story is is incredibly sad. If you if you haven't seen uh, what happened, Miss Simone on Netflix, really really seek that out uh, quickly. It's a fantastic documentary. Um, but before she kind of disappeared to Europe, um, she was kind of at the height of her powers and maybe feeling a little disaffected. Uh, and there's some magic in that that time period for me with Nina Simone, um, her anger is at the surface, I think. Uh, I mean, you can see it in her face. But it's, it's, it's fantastic the way it comes through the music. Um, the Pusher, Funkier Than a Mosquito's Tweeter. Um, it's just great music on here. Unfortunately, uh, it's funny because I've heard so many horror stories about Dynaflex, and I've, I guess, been very lucky and had a lot of good uh, Bowie and a lot of good Nina Simone on Dynaflex. This is not good. This is a horrible pressing, which I hope I can get cleaned and maybe it'll sound a little better, but there's non-fill. It's probably just going to sound like a staticky mess no matter how much I clean it. Uh, luckily, the music totally shines through, and... Um, it it just doesn't matter because because the music is so good. Uh, here's this is a random aside, um, but the recording engineer on like every Nina Simone album I don't know if this is focusing is Ed Begley. Is that Ed Begley Jr.'s dad? Does anybody know? Does it matter? It bothers me every time I take out a Nina Simone record. Anyway, uh, Nina Simone. Um, it is finished. Very happy to pick that one up. Of course, as I picked it up, the 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 
record store owner said, oh, you got the last one. We put out a bunch of Nina Simone yesterday, which burned, but whatever. What can you do? Uh, here's another one. Finally got, got myself some blues on Delmark. This is uh, Arthur Big Boy Crudup, Crudup's Mood. Um, I haven't even, honestly, I haven't got, again, I've just been job to job to job to job here, but um, I haven't gotten to spend too much time with it, but I have heard such good things about Delmark. Um, I have heard such good things on Delmark. And I know that it's it's a label that's kind of held in high esteem. And I recently saw, I think Michael Fremer made a video um, from Analog Planet, uh, where he, I guess he was at Expona, the high-end audio show, and he was talking to the guy from Delmark, and they're apparently reissuing all of their um, their catalog, but from the original master tapes and using vintage equipment and and it just it, it just seems you know for all the world like it's a collector's label um so very happy to get some more of that um i know some of you will probably be much more familiar with that album than i am so feel free to let me know what you think about it ah i was super souped to get this here um jim hendrix are you experienced with Axis Bold as Love. Uh, this is a UK Polydor kind of twofer here. And uh, it had been on the wall, actually, for a little while at pretty much the, the top end of what you could ask for something like this. It's in, it's not quite near mint on the sleeve, but the discs certainly are. Um, and, the, and the sleeve really is a VG Plus sleeve. So um, I guess for Record Store Day, they decided to drop the price. Um, and, uh, now I have, uh, beautiful UK copies of Are You Experienced and Access Bold is Love, which is great because I needed Are You Experienced and my copy of Access Bold is Love is kind of Rice Krispie-ish. Uh, it would probably do me more good as trade fodder. Um, so, Yeah. And they sound incredible. Um, I only spun Are You Experienced, but it sounded amazing. It sounded great. So really, really happy to get that. Um, and this, this I ponied up for a little bit, but I, I couldn't leave it behind. This is the Smiths. Uh, William, it was really nothing. This is a, a German single from 1984. And this was nice, actually, because, you know, Record Store Day, if I had actually gone to Record Store Day, I'd get a bunch of colored colored vinyl or exclusive stuff. But it was nice to get a little pop of color, even if this is a, a pressing from 84. Um, and seeing this splatter from 84, I was a little scared in terms of what sound quality would be like. But it sounds incredible. It's very quiet. Uh, it's a 45 RPM single. So, um, it sounds fantastic. It's backed with How Soon Is Now and Please Please Let Me Get What I Want. Please, please, please let me get what I want. Um, these Smith singles are, you know, they're gold for me. I love finding these. I'm always happy to pick up another. I don't have a huge amount, but I have enough that I want more, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. Great stuff. Super happy to find it. All right. If I can get in the last one before the dogs uh, bark and ruin the whole video. This is absolutely the grail find. Um, but I, I had to wait till I got home to, to really know that. Uh, this is Gavin Breyer's The Sinking of the Titanic. Um, this is on Obscure Records. It's part of Eno's Ambient series, from what I understand. Uh, Brian Eno produced this. This is, I believe, an original pressing on the, uh, the gray or the black and white label. And this was, again, this was on the wall. I hemmed and hawed a little bit before I bought it. I knew I wanted it, but, well, you know, it's, this is an expensive record. I've got all these cheap records, so I put back two cheap records. 
uh, an Exotica record and, and an extra copy of Nielsen Schmielsen. So no remorse about leaving those behind. Um, but I brought this with me and not only is it in a fantastic, um, audio journey, I really like, it's funny, I'm not a huge fan of electronic music. A lot of the repetition of electronic music is what maybe turns me off, but this early ambient stuff, I love the slow droning repetition. It's, I, I for some reason that slow pace helps me get into it. And also I think the, the extent to which they they're they're making art with a capital a here they really they they have the the courage of their conviction and they're they're trying strange stuff uh, with 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 you know serious intention um the sinking of the titanic which is the only track that i've been able to make it through um not the sinking of the titanic excuse me uh jesus blood never failed me yet which is side two uh was created by by using a field recording of an old man um on the street singing jesus blood never failed me yet I, I guess some kind of old hymnal or or devotional song and so gavin Bryars made a tape loop of it and then wrote and recorded and he picked the the the, the sound clip because it was in tune to his piano and then he wrote and recorded a piano piece and, and this beautiful or orchestral um piece that kind of builds very very slowly over the top of it uh it's really really moving um to add to all of that uh i got this for a fraction of what it goes for i got a real a real deal on this um which is great I, i'm excited you know this is exactly the kind of thing that i would love to find in the wild that i would never go seek out on discogs and spend what people are asking for it so it's always nice when when that pays off and you're able to find those things um, this early era, you know, Discreet Music is one of my favorite Eno albums. Um, I, after hearing this, I have a sample size of two. I can tell you that early ambient plus classical is a, a huge sweet spot for me. I really love, um, how this sounds. I can't wait to get more familiar with this. Um, yeah, I'm really, really souped to pick this up. So... Gavin Breyer's The Sinking of the Titanic. He's, that was, uh, that's it. That's my, that's my record store day haul. Um, or my day after record store day haul. So, um, I've got another stack of stuff here that I'll, I'll be making a video soon. Just things that have slowly trickled in that I haven't showed you guys yet. And, uh, hopefully I'll get that out soon enough. I'm sorry, I'm so behind on comments. Um, Tone, we do need to hang out. Uh, ben, at some point I'll have to respond about Talib Kweli because I have lots of thoughts and I don't t I don't disagree with you. Um, uh, Headley, I saw a comment you left on my first video that I never responded to. I just want to let you guys know that um, if you do leave me a comment, if you are communicating with me, if, if for some reason I haven't gotten back to you, I'm, I, I've read it, I've appreciated it, I've thought deeply about it, and probably turned myself into a, such a ball of anxiety that I was incapable of responding. And I really, I feel bad for that. I don't think that's, um, it's honest, but it's maybe not, uh, it's not a good excuse. Um, anyway, just thank you to everybody. Uh, apologies to everybody who subscribed and then got nothing. Uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, I hope this is, uh, this is something to enjoy and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.